We can't find a pattern that's exactly like this because this is a very unusual coat, but we can find something as close as possible and see if we can Frankenstein it to work. I think I'm gonna go with this three seam coat. In fact, I think it might be helpful to draw a rough pattern of the embroidery on it to see if I can figure it out. So there's a back and a front and there are no clear pictures of the side. So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is go take a swing by the V&A and have a look at this coat for myself. I've found out some big things that change just about everything. This side piece is actually two pieces of velvet and they're joined together down the middle with a whole stem of Sweet Sicily over the top. So we will take that home and see what I can do with a pattern. This was my first attempt. After that sort of funny little diagram I drew in my notebook on the day I went to the museum with the kind of weird diagonal seam in it, I brought that home and tried to make it work and figure out what that was and what it was for, because it's not in a sensible place. And it was clearly where two pieces of velvet had been joined. And this was my first attempt to come up with something that made sense. You can see the front piece here. This is the front edge down the middle. And here's the first row of embroidery. Here's the little triangular white piece that you can see under the arm and just in front of the sleeve in the museum. And here's the side piece. I don't think there's any embroidery underneath the arm. And here's that diagonal seam where two pieces are joined together. And again, it just doesn't make much sense. Here's the white piece in the back, this piece here, or this piece down here and the back piece. I'm fairly confident about the back piece and this piece, but it's just this side piece. It just didn't feel right. I went to trying to look a bit closer at the actual embroidery pattern. And I was looking here at that picture where you can see the worn edge of the hem. This is that white lacy piece. This is the one at the centre back. This is the side piece of velvet. And I've kind of sketched on the flower pattern and what I was looking at here was the grain of the fabric. Do you remember how I was saying it was useful to see the direction of the grain of the fabric? Wherever I look on those photos, I can see at the edge of each piece of fabric, the angle of the weave of the velvet coming into that seam. It's like having a compass. Every place where I can see the weave coming into the fabric, I can see the direction where the fabric was cut at that point. If I've got an edge going up the side of the coat and the weave comes in like this, then I know that the piece was cut like this. The weave of the fabric goes here and that edge was cut that way. So wherever I am looking around the edges of all the pieces of velvet, I can kind of see the angle that that edge would be on the fabric because I can see the weave of the fabric. So if you look again at the latest version of the pattern, here's the front, here's the side, here's the sort of side piece there, made of two pieces of velvet with this funny diagonal seam. And I'm looking at the hem edge here. And looking at the photograph of that edge, I could see that the weave of the fabric here was horizontal. So at this point, the fabric was cut like this horizontally. When you get around to here, the weave of the fabric was doing this. It came in at this angle. What does that mean? It means that actually, well, when it was cut out, the weave was this way. So at this point at the back of that piece, the edge was that shape. In other words, I could see along the edge of here, the weave of the fabric coming into the edge of the fabric like this, and then gradually turning like that. Which means that actually the edge of the fabric looks like this, where the weave is here at this point at the front. And then when you come around towards the back, it's coming in at the 
an angle like this. So that's how I could tell this edge is actually very, very curved, like the edge of a skirt. That started to give me some clues. I was also looking on this last but one, again trying to fit the pattern in, the pattern of the flowers, and again drawing them on and trying to figure out whether they were just in proportion in comparison to the actual pictures of the coat or whether, it, you know, it seemed like there was sometimes a bit too much room. I was trying to fit in the whole of that column of flowers up the front piece. When I made them about as wide as they should be, is that now looking too wide or too narrow? So I then went to try a slightly different pattern. That's the loose fitting coat we have been using. That's a tighter fitting coat. I wanted the pieces a bit more narrow because it seemed like, particularly on this side piece, I had a bit too much room. The flowers seemed like they were floating and too sparse. So I went with this closer fitting coat pattern to see whether I could make that one work. This is a process of just trying everything at this stage because if I go and draft a pattern based on a half-baked version of the pattern, it may not work at all, which would mean it was a dead end, which would mean I'd spend whole bunch of time drafting out a huge pattern, cutting out all the mock-up fabric, making a mock-up up and then finding, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happening now. That is why I'm going through all of these iterations after iterations after iterations. If I can figure out as much as possible on an A4 size, letter size piece of tracing paper, it saves me so much time drafting out huge patterns and doing a thousand mock-ups. So the more I can figure out now, the better. So this final one that I did the other day, based on a closer fitting coat pattern from the same book, it came out almost right. It's nearly there. This front piece is looking good. A little bit narrow, maybe. I'd like it to be a little bit wider. And at this stage, it's so close now that I'm getting to the point of I like it, but this bit needs to move a bit, this bit needs to change a bit, and just seeing whether all the things that need to change add up to doing something. Just, it's all putting the clues together and trying to solve the puzzle. This is nearly, nearly there. I've still got the proportions of these pieces being a bit narrow, so I'm gonna go back to the looser fitting three seam coat. You can see I've got my bit of tracing paper ready, and I'm gonna have Hopefully one last go at tracing this thing out and getting a pattern that I think will actually work, that I trust enough to actually get out the big roll of paper and start actually drafting the real pattern. So let's give that a go. me as you do, dear reader, what do you think the chances are that I'm overthinking this? <laughs> so here's what I noticed. I made a pattern using the looser fitting three seam coat, which seemed to be a better shape for a loose fitting evening coat. And then I made a version that seemed to work a little better in some ways with the normal close fitting, tightly fitted ulster coat pattern. But it was just a little bit too narrow in this front piece. I wanted that a bit wider and I wanted the back a bit wider as well. But other than that, it seemed to work mostly because this line, this seam came down to a point that's just very close to the back of that white triangle there. 
When I then place this back over the pattern draft in the book, what I notice is that I've drawn the pattern down the middle of the front piece like this, quite a way away from where the middle of that front piece would be because that line where the embroidery goes should be kind of down the bust line or that's what it seems to me. And I've made it narrower than that. So actually, if I follow this pattern a bit more closely and stop overthinking it and trying to reinvent the wheel, maybe I'll get a pattern that's a bit more like what I want. Because all I need to do to make this right is to make that a bit wider, push all of that a little bit further back, which is what this suggests I do anyway, and then make this a bit wider, which I think I can do. I mean, you can move the lines on a pattern, you can alter it, so... I think I may just need a little bit of adjustment to this pattern. I think I've been reusing the wrong pattern all along. I don't think this was the right one. I think this was a better one. So we'll try it with that. Through this front piece is not rectangular. I've been assuming that this front piece was just that was a selvage and that was selvage and it was just one rectangle. Not quite true. Looking at the photograph on the screen, I mean I can't measure it that closely but I can get an impression from looking at it on the mannequin and in fact it is a bit wider at the hem so I was starting to worry here this was not going to work because this line isn't parallel to this. Anyway, I'm going into way too much detail, aren't I? a lot truer than anything I've done yet. I think I've got it, you know. The last version I did, I said this too narrow I've written here. This part's too narrow. This part's too wide. The distance between the back of that white triangle and this funny diagonal seam is just too much. But the way I've drawn it now, with that front piece flaring out a bit as it is on this pattern, I end up with wider front piece that just rings a bit truer and I've now got 
those two almost meeting, which is what I need. So I think we're nearly there. Ooh. And I think judging by this, the white triangle just is inserted in that seam. Yep. I'm pretty darn happy with that. I'm very happy with that, actually. <laughs> I think I've finally done it. This is my pattern and it just, I can see I've drawn all the flowers on it and it just, I know it's right because it just feels right. The shapes look like an actual pattern that I might have seen before, not my sort of weird Frankenstein version. It looks like a viable pattern and all the flowers, they just fit nicely on the pattern. There's nowhere on this pattern where I've crammed something in. So I think I've got it. Every part of it just felt good. I don't know whether that's a technical measure of whether it's right or not, but it just, it just feels like it works. In the end, we didn't end up using that three seam coat at all. We ended up with the plain Ulster, just an average 1900 coat. I've altered to make into my pattern. So what we need to do now is take this pattern draft and draft it out for real. Then take this and make it into my pattern and then we'll be able to mock it up. So just a final note before we start drafting, look once again what I had for a pattern before I went to a museum uh, not sure. I thought that white triangle at the front went right up into the armhole. I thought this was much wider. A look at what we got by going to the museum, actually taking photos, even though I can't look at it flat on a table. We found out so much from going and seeing it in person, just looking a bit closer. And I think I can safely say, despite my experience, I would never have come up with that for a pattern without having gone and looked at it in person. So I'm glad that I went and I'm glad that I spent all of that time this month figuring out a pattern that I'm really happy with because anything I do now with a pattern draft and a mock-up, I'm fairly sure that it won't be too far off because it's much easier to fiddle with things at this stage than it is at the mock-up stage. First rule, cut the paper the right size. Mm -hmm. 